review time again, and this time another dash cam. I bought a dash cam for me, I bought one for my wife, I bought one for our trip to Japan, and now I bought another one. Um, this one's for my folks, I'm going to give it to them. Um, probably a Christmas present here, so hopefully they're not watching this review, because that'll kind of wreck the surprise. This one's from GMAC. I had another GMAC dash cam that was actually quite good quality. Uh, miniature one. Uh, 7 inch FHD rear view mirror. So pretty cool concept actually. Um, dash cams sit up on your dash, on your windshield of course, and um, they kind of block your view a little bit. This one is a little bit different. It's a rear view mirror that has a camera in it. it has motion detection, um, so it, you can set it up to go off with motion detection. Uh, G sensors, and a, um, I presume an accelerometer of some sort that uh, detects when the car has moved and it'll start recording. It loop records, that just means it records over and over and over. Um, doesn't get to the end of the full memory card and stop. Touch screen, which I'll show you in a second, and it has an advanced chipset. I don't know what that means. 7 inch high resolution screen. So let's get right to it. I hate unboxings, but this is an unboxing partly because I just got it and I wanted to show you real quick what it looks like, um, but partly because it has a really cool box. So there it is. That's pretty good. And there I am. Hey. So that's it. It comes like this. It has a film on it. There's a, or sorry, not a film. Yeah, a film. A, a plastic film that you need to peel off before you use it. I don't know if you can see in there, but there is, in fact, a screen there inside of that. So there's an off on button on the bottom. And on the top, we have a spot for your USB cord, which it is included in here. There's another AV in, so you can put an audio video in, and that's I'll explain that in a second. That's from the rear view camera. And then, of course, the slot for your SD card. I have a 32 gig micro SD card that's going to go in this. So, the camera is there. What else is in the box? A piece of foam. That's beautiful. Get right to it. In there we have <clears throat> a USB charging cord for your new rear view mirror dash cam. I forgot to show you in the back of the thing here. The most important part is the camera. Good lord. So here's the camera and it. the important part about this is that it's movable. You can adjust it to wherever you need. So we'll show you that when we set it up. And these are the hooks for installing it on your existing rear view mirror. Then this is the charge cord, the power cord for it. Just plugs into a cigarette lighter. And then the other end of it plugs into, of course, right there, the other way around, for charging. Then they also include this nifty little setup. I think this is pretty cool. Let's get some more light on the subject. There we go. Get rid of the bags. So there's all kinds of little things for installing the camera. This is a rear view camera. It's a tiny little guy and it has four LED lights for illumination when it gets dark. Then it comes with a cord, a long cord. So I'll show you how to set this up in a minute, but this goes into up to the front of the car and goes into the mirror right there. And so, and this plugs into your rear, rear view, or sorry, this plugs into your backup lights. So when you put the car in reverse, the power goes to the backup lights. It also goes to this, powers up this camera and turns it on. So this has a reverse camera system in it. Pretty cool. Then this is the installation hardware for the mirror. It comes with three of these installation rubber bands and those just of course clip onto there and then go around your existing rear view mirror and clip into there, like so. I'll show you the installation here in a moment. Uh, you get two of those, which is needed for installing, and an extra one. So that's pretty good. And then you have a bunch of little clip things that have one-sided sticky tape on them, and that is for routing your wiring. So when you clip, when you stick this to your car somewhere, wherever you need, you can route the wire by putting it in this little clip like that. And it'll keep the wire kind of out of the way wherever you need it to be. So you can use those or leave them if you wish. It comes with this blue stick thing and I presume this is for removing the SD card, but I'm gonna look into that and see what the heck that's about. It looks interesting. I'll let you know. 
And then the most important part, of course, is your user manual for the GMAX CE36 FHD 1080p dash camera. 7 inch touchscreen rear view mirror. So, it gets into the product warnings and etc. etc. The things. Be sure to use a high speed memory card. 10 class 10 or above is recommended. I happen to have a class 10. I don't buy anything less than that. Class 10 should be sufficiently fast for most things anyway. Um, don't leave it in sunlight, direct sunlight for a long time or where the temperature could be above 75 degrees Celsius or 170 Fahrenheit. Okay, so you're going to insert the memory card. You're going to do a, I'll walk through the installation in a second. It has a decent um, diagram here on how it works, how to route it. So the mirror's up here and you route it down into your cigarette lighter and then it also shows two options for routing the rear view camera. So we'll get into that outside here in the vehicle in a second. And then all the parts of the camera, etc., all our parts of the mirror. Um, we'll go through the setup. And then it goes right into use, playback, taking a photo. It can take a photograph. Um, I have a similar one, we've used it quite a bit, and it's it's quite cool to be able to stop and take pictures with your rear view mirror. Um, we shoot, it shoots in 1080p, 1080 or 720. So 1080 is HD, that's your lowest level of HD which is pretty good. And then your still photos are uh, 12 megapixels, 8, 5 to 1.3 or VGA. Uh, quality being fine, normal or economy. That all depends on how much memory card you want to take up. So I've got 32 gigs here. That's quite a bit of gigs. Should be okay. It also does uh, ISO adjustment. So auto 100 or 200 ISO. That's interesting. You can adjust the um, exposure, sharpness, etc. And it has a date and time stamp, of course. So night mode as well is another useful thing. It'll switch quickly to and from night mode. Um, I didn't adjust our original one and it worked just fine at night. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, screensaver. <clears throat> I'll explain all this later. We'll go through it and show you in the car. It's probably an easier place to do it. So there you go. That's the parameters we get into that. And then we switch to Japanese. So it's in, let's see what languages we have. We have English, Japanese, so we have English and Japanese are the only two languages in this instruction menu. That's interesting. But you can buy it in the US, Europe, Canada, UK, Australia, and Japan. So there you go. Primarily geared towards the North American English markets and Japan. Interesting. So let's, um, let me grab a power cord and I can fire it up right here and show you the features on the screen itself. Okay, I've set up a power cord of sorts here inside. I'm not out in the car, obviously. Um, I've just plugged in a USB into my computer and that'll give me the five volts required to power this thing up. So um, when I plug this in, it'll be instantly powered. And this is what will happen when you first turn on your car as well. So you turn on your car and it powers up the unit. And there it is. So, right away it says, please insert an SD card. Well, I haven't got an SD card inserted right now. I do have one, but I'm going to format it and put it in in a minute. I want to show you quickly, let's zoom in a bit there. I want to show you quickly the um, menu. So let's go back to menu. So here's the main menu, the home. We're at home right now. So car DVR is car digital video. And now you're looking at the recording what it sees, what the camera sees. Let's go back. So you can take a photograph. If I had a DV, if I had a SD card in there, I could hit that and take a, it says no card, I could take a picture of whatever's in front of it. Playback, you can go there and you can, of course there's no card, but you can see what's on your videos. You can play the video or see the pictures. Let's get into the settings. So first is video. Uh, starts off with the resolution. There's your two resolution choices. I'll leave it on the highest one. Loop recording time. So that's how long are each of your clips. I like to have a nice long clips. So let's go five minutes. Your exposure, you can turn it up or down. Um, the higher the exposure, the lighter it looks. Um, so that's maybe you have it behind a dark window screen or something. You want to lighten it up a bit or whatever your preference is. I'm going to leave it at zero. Um, exposure, we just did that. And motion detection, so on or off. So it'll detect motion. So if it's parked, um, then it'll detect motion. Come on and start recording. Second page. Audio recording is on or off. I'm going to leave it on. So it actually records the audio inside the vehicle as you're driving. That's kind of cool. Date stamp on. I want to know when it happened. G sensor. So that's the sensor when it rocks the car. If, if you're not in your car and your car gets jolted or hit or something, 
um, medium is the sensitivity level currently and that will start recording as well to capture anything it can. Park mode, so that's again park mode high, low, or medium. Now let's go to back to our previous menu. Camera settings, resolution of our still camera is 12, 8, 5, 2, 1.3 and VGA. So those are the different sizes. I'm going to leave it right maxed out because big pictures are nice to have if you can afford the space on your SD card. The quality, I'm going to go with fine because that's a better quality. You can see the qualities there are normal. Str oh, sorry. You can see the quality there is fine, normal, or economy. And again, the finer the picture um, quality, then the more resolution and the more space it'll take on your SD card. I don't care because I'm not using it up. Sharpness, we're going to leave it normal. You can go strong or soft. That's just the sharpness effect of the, I presume, the video and the photos. Um, white balance, daylight, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, and auto. I'm going to leave it on auto. It seems to do okay, or at least our other one does. does okay with the auto detection of the white balance. On the next page, we have ISO. I'm going to leave that on auto as well. You have 100 or 200. The lower the ISO, um, the, the better quality your photos will be, especially under dark lighting conditions. So, if you have a high ISO under dark lighting conditions, it'll look grainy or have black dots. Auto works just fine. Uh, exposure, there again, you can adjust it up and down by, looks like minus one, minus two, or plus one, plus two, and date stamp. So date and time, or just date or off, I'm going to use date and time. Let's go back one more menu and into the main settings page. So night mode, I leave it at off, and it seems to do okay at night. Um, night mode, you can force it to go into a black and white mode all the time. Auto power off. Um, that's after the power goes away. Um, then it'll turn off on its own. One or three minutes. Screensaver uh, off. So that means screensaver just uh, turns off the camera after a certain amount of time. I'm going to put that to one minute. Um, screensaver will go back to turning this screen off. After it powers on, you start driving. Um, this screen still displays what the camera sees for one, three, five, or all the time. I turn that to one minute, so as I'm driving, this um, LED screen disappears and I'm able to see the mirror clearly. You can see objects behind you over top of this screen, but it takes some getting used to. Uh, the beep sound is on or off, and that's of course the clicking you hear when I touch these buttons. Page two, language is English. We have a multitude of languages there. I'm going to leave it on English. Frequency is 60 hertz. 50 is for Europe, I believe. The That's the frequency at which the lights flicker. Uh, 60 is for North America, for sure. Volume, we'll leave it on medium. Uh, that's fine. And format means format the SD card. We don't need to do that because I don't have one in there. Default setting, oops. Let's go back. Default setting is just change all your settings back to the default original. Date and time is where you adjust the date and time. I'll do that shortly. And that's it for there. So beyond that, go back to the main things. And we are in setting. That's everything here. So from there, let's head out to the car and install this. And we'll see how that works. Everything else is pretty straightforward. It shows it's charging the battery. There's a small battery inside this. Um, star is for night. You can turn it to night mode or day mode just by there. And you can lock it with this and then you can take a picture. Oh, you can't take a picture because it doesn't have an SD card. It automatically starts recording and then you can turn the audio on and off, of course, and we are home. So that's it. Let's unplug it and let's take it out to the car and get it installed. And you can see that. All right, it's around the car here now. Uh, I got the GMAC um, rear view mirror dash cam here. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to set it up. It literally comes out of the box. You pull it out of there like that. That's the mirror section. So the all the plug-in stuff and the SD card go on top. I have an SD card right here. I have a 32 gig uh, class 10. And that just goes in this way. So the sticker is facing you, facing the mirror part when you put it in. And you just push it in with your fingernail. It's in. There is a film on here. You need to peel that off. Easy enough. There's also a film on here, and I'm going to leave that on there for now. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I think I'm going to give this to my folks as a present, so I think I'm going to keep that on there just to keep it nice, keep it from scuffing. So you've got the mirror portion, and then in the box you're looking for 
two of these little guys for the quick installation. The other thing you'll want out of the box is this wire. It has the cigarette lighter adapter and the um, USB plug-in thing. So we're going to use that in just a second. But to start, we take and just put these rubber things into these little notches. One on each side. And these lock in there nicely, just like that. And then they'll go over the top of the mirror. And it kind of wedges onto your mirror just like that. It takes a bit of fandangling to get it locked on there. And you hook the two things on the bottom. Oh, I accidentally pushed the bottom button there so it turned on automatically. So, battery low. It hasn't charged up yet. I haven't used it. So, it turned off automatically. So there's your new rear view mirror. Um, it's nice and wide. And if I adjust it for my driving... Well, we'll do that in a minute. First, we need to plug it in so we get power from the car. Um, this is just a 5 volt input. So this wire is nice and long. There's 6 feet. I believe they said it was 14 feet. So anyway, it's 13 or 14 feet long. I'll put that in the description. And what we're going to do is take the small end and we're going to plug that into the top of the mirror. That plugs in there. And then bring it back up to where you're going to have it adjusted for you when you're driving. Then the other end just simply plugs into a power adapter and I have a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter down here. Tuck the wires out of the way, plug that in like that, and you're good to go. If I can find my keys, when we turn on the car, or just turn it to power, accessory, it will power up the mirror, the dash cam. So it should come on any second here. And there you go, it has a nice little upstart sound. So currently you're looking at the front of my garage. You can adjust the camera back and forth so that the camera is looking at your front of your car a little bit or at the road. Um, I had a similar model in Japan and it was, of course, right-hand drive. It worked just as well um, that way. So you can see it started off recording. It comes on recording like that. And I believe I've got it set to um, go to sleep in one minute. Screensaver one minute, that's right. So in one minute, that will go back to sleep. It's kind of cool when it first starts up, you can see your screen. That's a nice big screen, um, high quality screen. You can also look at your videos from there. So we can stop the recording there and then we can go to playback and that video that we just had will be there. Yeah, that's a nice big screen. Okay, so there you go. Um, I like it because you can play it back right away. You can also go and take a picture, photograph, and there it is. I've just taken a picture. So I, I think it's pretty cool. I got this for my folks. I got one of these for my, my wife. I got one for my car. Um, I've had other dash cams, but this is pretty cool. I actually run a dash cam like this in the front and then a normal conventional dash cam in the back. And uh, I, I think they're awesome. So there you have it. What else was I going to tell you quickly? Oh, so if it's on DVR and you're just going like this and you want to turn it off, turn off the screen, you can just touch the bottom button and it goes blank. Now you've got just a regular rear view mirror. Touch it again and it comes back on. So that's a pretty good feature. Um, it stopped recording because I stopped it. And I can start it again. We can switch to night mode. There's night mode. And you see there's not really any difference here. Um, I'll just stop the recording. So next thing is to take this thing for a drive and I'll show you the footage right off of here. So pretty good, uh, pretty good balance there between outdoor light and indoor light. And you can see it adjusts to the headlights coming on and off. So that's pretty good. So let's go for a quick drive here and see how she performs. I've got a Nerf war going on behind me here, so I've got to be careful. I don't want to remove any Nerf fighters. There's one now. A six-year-old Nerf fighter. Close the garage there. So, that's an excellent, excellent image. I 
really am impressed with this video screen on here. Uh, running two cameras and driving a car at the same time is probably somewhere in the distracted driving hand handbook, but uh, at any rate, I'll try to keep her between the lines here. So I've adjusted the camera a little bit, and that's pretty good right there. So you can see we've got an excellent view of the road. Um, we've got a view of the far right and the far left, so that's that's pretty impressive. You can see stuff coming and going. My might, mirror might be off a little bit there, but pretty impressive. I'm trying not to run any red lights here. Field of view is excellent. If I want to stop and take a picture, I could do so. Photograph, do it quickly. Boom, got a picture of those folks there. I'm sure they're happy about that. And back to the DVR. When you do that, the DVR continues recording. So that's pretty good. Got bald guy and his wife in the picture. That's pretty good. I'll put them on Facebook later. Now it would help if my window was clean. Now that I've seen this uh, bit of disgusting bug smear. I'll clean the window and see what happens. So it's going to get worse before it gets better, obviously. But let's clean that window and see if... Uh... Well, there's what it looks like in the rain. Not bad. That's not going to get any cleaner than that. We'll just do a short little jaunt here. So it is distracting to have this video rolling up there, but it's also quite cool. Um, in the event of an accident, as a paramedic, I go to a lot of accidents, and every time I'm at an accident, the police are there and they're looking for dash cams for evidence. So it's a pretty good thing, especially if you're not at fault. If you're at fault, oh, it's not so good. So there has been one minute. It's gone out on its own. I'll pop it back on just so we can watch it because it is kind of cool. here and head back home. It's pretty neat the things you catch on a dash cam actually. There's a lot of videos on YouTube. A lot of guys use them just for for fun. Um, but it's actually a very useful thing. We've used it to uh, record stuff when we go on trips and things like that for our family videos. We've used the this video and then used it for a time lapse and that works quite well. It's pretty a pretty fun way to remember the trip for sure. And this records in HD 1080p so that's uh, that's definitely big enough for YouTube. It's been another minute so it's going out again as soon as I pass by these lovely folks. I'll pop it back on. So there you have it. The GMAC 7 inch HD rear view mirror dash cam uh, it's fantastic I don't give five stars to all my reviews but this one definitely gets five stars there's no question it's uh, it's phenomenal I'll turn off the car but I'll leave it on accessory so the G Max stays on um, the quality of it is great it's a great feeling great looking um, thing it definitely adds to the value of your car and it will probably hold up in court when and if there's an accident uh, and at fault or not at fault accident. So yeah, the GMAC 7-inch rear view mirror dash cam, two thumbs up for me for sure.